Welcome to Motoring Today, the Philippines' premier and longest-running weekly motor news and features TV and online magazine. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are this week's features to watch out for. On Motoring Forum, we shall discuss the state of public transportation in Metro Manila. Our road safety reminder in the Young Street Smart Portion centers on right-of-way vehicles on the right. This week's Pine to Pair shall be about the limit on the number of passengers in PUVs. Showcase this week shall have the luxury SUV crossover from Mini, the Countryman Cooper S. All of these plus the latest news in transportation and traffic management, as well as developments in the automotive industry, are on this week's edition of Motoring Today. Join us! Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Welcome back to Motoring Today. Here now are the latest news and developments in the country's transportation and traffic management. Transport authorities are looking to upgrade the Light Rail Transit Line 2 and want the private sector to undertake this project. The Light Rail Transit 2 line is due for an upgrade according to the Department of Transportation. In published reports, DOTR Undersecretary Cesar Chavez said there are plans to overhaul the LRT2 fleet of trains and extend the rail line from the Recto Station to Tondo in Manila with the addition of three more stations. The LRT2 West Extension project is estimated to cost 10.2 billion pesos. The DOTR is looking to the private sector to fund the project and will entertain proposals for a three-run package that will include overhauling the LRT2 fleet of trains, maintenance of units, and construction of the extension. This is in line with the mandate of President Bongbong Marcos and the Department of Finance Secretary Benjamin Diokno for infrastructure projects to be undertaken using the Public-Private Partnership Initiative. Also included in the project are the acquisition of right-of-way and the purchase of five new train sets with four-car configuration. Reports said the Light Rail Transit Authority is hoping the procurement for the design and build contract for the extension project will be awarded this year. Many believe upgrading the LRT2 is an urgent need as ridership expected to increase with economy reopening and schools returning to face-to-face -to -face classes. <music> Meanwhile, EDSA carousel operators claim they are still hurting even with the partial payments from government for their Libring Sakai operations. After receiving 310 million pesos as partial payment for implementing government's Libring Sakai program on the EDSA carousel, the Mega Manila Consortium Corporation claimed government still owes bus operators another 310 million pesos. In an interview with ABS-CBN Teleradio, MMCC Internal Affairs Officer Juliet De Jesus said the amount covers a four-week backlog in payments for implementing the Libring Sakai program on the Etsy Carousel. De Jesus indicated that bus operators also owe money to suppliers of fuel. In the same program, De Jesus revealed that bus operators plan to discuss an increase in fares, pointing out that the last fare adjustment was granted back in 2011. They are also operating buses on routes other than the Etsy Carousel, which are also affected by the high cost of fuel. After releasing parcel payments to the consortium, the LTFRB extracted a promise from bus operators to deploy more units on the Etsy Carousel to get closer to contracting capacity for more than 500 units daily. Like its predecessor, the new administration is struggling with balancing the needs of commuters and transport operators. The Libring Sakai program is costing taxpayers billions of pesos. Meanwhile, operators are struggling with the astronomical rise in fuel prices. Mm -hmm. 
Continuing, railer projects appear to remain a priority under the new administration of President Bongbong Marcos. During his first State of the Nation address, President Obama Marcos mentioned his desire to start or complete construction of several railway projects proposed or began in the previous administration. In line with this, Department of Transportation Undersecretary for Railway Cesar Chavez reported the status of several railway projects during an economic briefing after the President's son. Among projects mentioned in the briefing is a Metro Manila subway, which Chavez said has reached 60% completion for procurement. Another is a North-South Commuter Railway project with the Tutubad to Malolos and Malolos to Clark segments at 93% complete on procurement, and the Manila to Tutubad to Calamba segment at 61% complete on procurement. Chavez also reported that the Light Rail Transit Line 1 extension project, which extends the LRT1 southward from Baclara to Baco or Cavite, is at 69% complete on construction. Also more than half complete at 61% is the construction of the Metro Rail Transit Line 7, a PPP project with the San Miguel Corporation. Chavez reiterated that the President also wants to see the Cebu Railway System, the Panay Railway Project, and the Mindanao Railway Project to be implemented. Already, the MRP, one of the projects with cancelled ODA loans from China, has been resubmitted to NEDA for funding reapproval. It is left to NEDA to decide whether to continue the project to establish railway in Mindanao through the PPA or with another ODA. This development should warm the hearts of those advocating rail as among major pillars of an efficient and affordable mass transport system. And finally, also among priorities of the new administration is the construction of mega bridges. The construction of mega bridges linking islands and areas with high economic activity remains a priority, according to the Department of Public Works and Highway Secretary Manuel Bonoan. Published reports quoted Boroan as saying government will continue several big-ticket infrastructure projects including the construction of mega-bridges. Boroan cited the mega-bridge that will link Pataan and Cavite, another connecting Panay, Guimaras, and Negros, a fourth bridge connecting Mactan to the Cebu mainland, and a three-kilometer connector bridge between Samal Island and Davao City. Also eyed for construction are the Gikam Bridge to connect the towns of Alicia and Mabua and Zamboanga, Cebugay, and three more bridges in Tawi-Tawi. Boroan also said more bridges spanning the Pasig, Marikin, and Mangahan rivers are planned to ease congestion in Metro Manila. The construction of mega and standard bridges as well as other big-ticket infrastructure projects is in line with the government's goal of sustaining rapid growth and attract investment and create economic opportunities for all Filipinos, said Boroan. All these projects need funding and government needs to be very creative in sourcing financing from the private sector and official development assistance from other countries. Those are the latest news and developments in transportation and traffic management. Coming up next is Motoring Forum, brought to you by Suzuki Philippines. Everyone agrees that our public transportation system isn't ideal. Motoring Forum discusses the state of public transportation in Metro Manila. Almost every day, motorists along EDSA see long lines of commuters waiting for buses at loading and unloading base of the EDSA carousel. The EDSA carousel was put in place by transport authorities as one of the solutions to traffic congestion on main thoroughfares of Metro Manila. Still, every day, traffic is congested on EDSA. At so-called rush hours when co-workers commute to work or head off to home, long lines can also be seen on light rail transit stations. The lines at the MRT3 was particularly long when the ride was free under the Libre Sakai program of the government. Commuters said they would rather wait long in line assured that they would get on the train for a relatively quick ride to their destinations. And it isn't just the light rail transit lines at the Etza Carousel. Commuters daily fight for space on the jeepneys, buses, and shuttles. And for those who can afford the so-called transit network vehicles, it takes longer to book rides. Many commuters are now risking life and limb taking the so-called motorcycle taxis, now made a legitimate public transport. Although it is quite noticeable, especially at night around call centers, many remain colorums. There are point-to-point -point buses on many routes, but daily wage workers who make up the bulk of commuters in Metro Manila cannot afford them. Before modern jeepney routes have been opened by the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, but the units have come few and far between. After authorities eased capacity restriction and reopened the economy, taxi drivers are back to their old habits of turning down fares and become scarce during rush hours. Many blaming traffic congestion as well as the meteoric rise of fuel prices and the cost of living in the metro. Then there are the tricycles, many now going electric, that are the bane of motorists as they go about ignoring all traffic regulations stopping anywhere, going against the flow of traffic, and adding to the daily congestion in barangays, secondary roads, and some even going on EDSA and other major thoroughfares. 
Meanwhile, Metro Manila is back to suffering daily gridlock on many thoroughfares. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority reports that travel time on EDSA has improved and the volume of vehicles has decreased ever since the price of fuel skyrocketed this year. But don't tell that to motorists who daily spend hours in traffic, time which could be spent for more productive endeavors or activities, or more time enjoying life and family and friends. Don't tell that commuters who seem to spend as many hours on the road as they do at work. Motorists are prone to blame public utility vehicles and their undisciplined drivers for the congestion. Transport operators and drivers blame congestion on private motorists, pointing out that there are more private vehicles on the road than POVs. Already, traffic authorities have been experimenting with various schemes to reduce the volume of vehicles on the road, banning them from certain roads at various times to ease congestion. Still, metro thoroughfares remain crowded even as vehicle sales, including the two-wheel variety, are again surging, so much so that some legislators are now proposing to tax vehicles more to discourage sales. But many are arguing that people will stop using their cars or other personal forms of mobility if only the metro's mass transportation is efficient, comfortable, accessible, and safe. Transport authorities and other concerned agencies have been patting themselves on the back about the programs, projects, and policies they are implementing, upgrading the light rail systems, rehabbing or building elevated tollways and bridges, the PV modernization program, etc. But are these developments catching up to the seemingly increasing demand for an affordable and accessible mass transport network in the metro? Commuters and motorists daily suffer from our inefficient mass transport system and traffic congestion. Aside from complaining and demanding more from government and transport authorities, what can each and every one of us do to help ease our woes? That's our motoring forum for this week, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. are back with us here on Motoring Today. We now have this week's valuable motoring tips, starting off with some road safety reminders from Toyota Motor Philippines. If you are stopped at an intersection, paunahin ang sasakyan na nasa kanan dahil ito ay may right of way. It is important to keep this in mind for smooth travel. Continuing with this week's edition of Motoring Today, let's now focus on proper driver's demeanor, especially for those driving PUVs. Here's Pai Chopper this week. Pai Chopper lang, kaibigan. Ako si Aliano Luico. Isang kapwaan niyo, Chopper. Huwag nang ipilit magsakay ng pasayero kung hindi nakasya. Ang bawat pampasadang sasakyan ay mayroong tinatawag na passenger limit o bilang ng mga pasahero na magkakasya. Kapag puno na, iwasang magtawag pa ng ilan at ipagsiksikan. Tandaan din na bawal maglagay ng ekstra bangko sa gitna ng pampasadang sasakyan. Palaging isipin na mahalaga rin na komportable ang ating mga pasahero. Ito po si Alejandro Loico, payong chopper lang. Kaibigan, mula sa inyong kapwa niyo, chopper. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours.
Introducing the all-new Isuzu D-MAX into new heights. Suzuki El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. Our Car of the Week is next on Showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Mini Asia and British United Automobiles Incorporated have finally made available locally the new Mini Countryman. This edition of Showcase takes a look at the Mini Countryman Cooper X. The Mini has carved a niche all on its own with an iconic design which has never strayed far from the first Mark I Mini rolled out back in 1959. To this day, there's no mistaking a Mini from any angle seen on the road. This is certainly true with the Mini Countryman Cooper S, even though at around 4,297mm long, 1,822mm wide, and 1,557mm tall, it is by far the largest of the Minis. The five-passenger, five-door Countryman was rolled out to carve a niche of its own in the now-popular SUV crossover segment, arriving as an SAV or Sport Activity Vehicle that can be both at home in the city, the countryside, or even off-road trails. While staying true to its mini heritage, mainly in its proportions and overall look, the new Countryman follows a new distinct robust go-anywhere styling. The new black radiator grille is particularly distinctive with the red S for the Countryman Cooper S. Also distinctive are the asymmetrically rounded LED headlamps outlined by a continuous band of light that serve both as a daylight running light and turn indicators. The Mini Countryman also comes standard with front and rear LED fog lamps, with light band on the upper semicircle serving as the park lights. Serving to remind about the rich British heritage of the Mini Countryman are the upright rear chrome framed LED lights with the Union Jack motive. The roof and side mirrors of the Mini get the piano black treatment. Also getting the black gloss finish are the headlight surrounds, rear light, radiator grille, side turn indicators, and door handles. The Countryman Cooper S also comes with standard 19-inch turn style spoke two-tone light alloy wheel strap by Run Flat Tires. In all four trim, the Countryman Cooper S also features chrome-plated tailpipes and roof rails. Their appointments have also been upgraded and updated in the new Mini Countryman Cooper S. Quite distinctive is the 8.0-inch color touchscreen display for what Mini calls the Connective Navigation Plus located in the circular panel in the center of the dashboard, featuring high-gloss piano black surfaces. The system comes with wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless charger from mobile phones, and a second USB socket. The 5-inch digital instrument display is found behind the steering wheel in a round black panel. The Mini Countryman now comes standard with front and rear park distance control as well as park assist. The Minis have also been characterized by having surprisingly roomy interior space for passenger and luggage. The Mini Countryman continues this tradition and comes standard with electrically adjustable seats for driver and front seat passenger, with driver also benefiting from memory function. There's room for three adults in the second row seats which can split and fold it 40-20-40 to enlarge the rear storage space from 450 liters to 1390 liters. It comes in 12 ambient lighting colors that should suit various moods. The Countryman Cooper S is powered by a 1998cc gasoline engine with a mini twin power turbo technology generating 192 horsepower from 5,000 to 5,500 rpm and maximum torque of 280 Nm from 1,350 to 4,600 rpm. The engine is made into a 7 speed Steptronic double clutch sport transmission. Mini says the Countryman Cooper S can accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in an impressive 7.5 seconds and attain a top speed of around 226 km per hour. As with all minis, the suspension settings of the Countryman Cooper S have been tweaked to ensure firm road holding without compromising on comfort. The driver can also, at the touch of the button, switch from mid, green, and sport driving modes, changing steering and accelerator settings depending on mood or road conditions. 
All in all, the Mini Countryman Cooper S is a fun, practical, and stylish vehicle for daily driving and weekend getaways. The Countryman is the most popular Mini model representing a third of global Mini sales. It should find a good niche for itself in the local premium compact SUV crossover market. That's our featured vehicle in this week's showcase, courtesy of Prudential Guarantee. Drive worry-free with Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program with a free 24-hour nationwide roadside assistance included with your comprehensive auto insurance. Rest assured, we'll take care of you and your car wherever you are. Prudential Guarantee's auto insurance program, 100% worry-free driving. Ambition. It's not a destination, nor a finish line. It's what you keep racing towards, to push, to the extremes, to race, race, race. That's when you find the limit. That's our ambition, so you too can race yours. Welcome back to Morning Today. The Auto Industry now takes center stage. The BMW Motorrad booth was among the crowd drawers at the Makina Moto Show at the SMX Convention Center in SM Mall of Asia. Showcased at the booth were the BMW R1250 GS and R1250 GS Adventure, the BMW M1000 RR as well as the iconic BMW R18 and BMW R9 T in Urban GS and Special Variants. Among the highlights were the BMW R18 Spirit of Passion by Kingston Custom, owned by the Euro Monkeys and the Nostalgia BMW R7 by Enmoto. Spencer Yu, president of SMC Asia Car Distributors Corp, says the return of the Makinish Moto Show is a significant event for the motorcycle riding community and the country as a whole. Aside from it being significant for the industry, it's also very significant for the country in the sense that this is a very strong sign that we're coming back to normalcy uh, after two years of having the pandemic. So it, it's great to be back, no? back to seeing people, back to seeing friends again that we've been absent from for almost three years. So yeah, that's I think for me the most significant thing about uh, the show. Ford Philippines is looking to claim a bigger stake in the pickup and SUV market with the launch of the next generation Ranger and Everest. Ford touts the next generation Ranger as the smartest, most versatile, and capable compact pickup with new improved capability and comfort, advanced technologies, and smart connectivity. Ford hypes the next generation Everest as a rugged, refined, and fun to drive SUV that blends adventure ready capability with exceptional comfort and customer focused technology. Both arrive with a 5-year, 150,000-kilometer warranty, which Ford Philippines Director Michael Breen says will enhance the ownership experience of the new Ranger and Everest. We're really excited about it because we're also talking about the next-generation Ford. What do I mean by next-generation Ford? What I really mean is an enhancement to the overall next-generation customer experience. What underpins that is our 5-year, 150,000-kilometer warranty that we're just announcing today. Ford offers multiple variants for both the Ranger and the Everest price points conducted to sales. With the next generation Ranger, we have eight variants available with the, the starting point on the next generation Ranger is 1,299,000 pesos. On Everest, as far as the options or variants on Everest, we actually have five variants available on Everest and the starting price for the Everest is at 1,799,000 pesos and which is just terrific when you think about the equipment and the, um, the way the vehicle is equipped. We absolutely expect increased volume on the Ranger and Everest compared with prior years. And that's the week that was in motoring. Thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget to check us out on social media. Until next week here on Motoring Today, now in its 36th year of continuing service to the general motoring public with a lifelong commitment to promote road safety. 
on behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, and my sister, Susie Gamboa. I'm Ray Louie Gamboa. Happy motoring! <laughs>